given the word was more refined. Yes. That's what I was looking for when I was trying to pull out that thing that we're going to talk about right after I do an intro. Right after this. Jared Poland Fronos Photo. Dot com and welcome to Raw Talk episode number 77. Paul Coffey, uh, Ray Bork. Uh, who else wears 77? I don't know who else wears 77, but those are some hockey players. Oh, no, Mario Lemieux was 66. Okay, I forgot that episode. Anyway, this is Raw Talk episode number 77. Welcome here to the podcast that now has over 1 million downloads of the audio portion one alone. 1 million. 1 million downloads of the audio. We have about 700,000 views on YouTube of the same, uh, of each epi- total episode. So wow. that puts us at 1.7 million views and plays, which is pretty nice for something that has really evolved and started to grow. Uh, you know, it's funny. I was listening to Kevin Smith the other day, which I do quite often. I listen to Smodcast or, or uh, Hollywood Babylon, and they did a, a show with his guy, Ralph Garman, which is who's a sidekick, and they were talking about how they just wanted to do a podcast seven years ago, or five, I think five years ago is when they started this one, uh, Hollywood Babylon, and they just wanted to talk. They sat down and they did it in front of a live audience and they just recorded it and they put it up there and it started with not a lot of traction and now they have a TV show coming on AMC. They have a, a pilot that they're filming. Wow. Which is to get Hollywood Babylon on TV. So it's just something different. It's just, you're going to find out in the weeks to come, we did an interview with a guy named Matt Beck who has a salon in, in New Hope and we're not running that yet, but he started with obviously zero YouTube subscribers and in eight months he's over 33,000. Just following the model that I've done. The guy is making four to five videos a week. We're going to, it's just, again, just set out to do something. And I guess I'm going to go off on a little rant before we even get started. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was, I was, I worked 16 hours yesterday, I believe, is what I've come up with. Isn't that every day? No, no. I think my hours are 12 to 15 hours a day, a, a day. Yeah. Is somewhere like I was doing, but it ended up being 16. And I'll tell you what happened is I, I was getting ready to go to the gym at eight in the morning because I drive an hour to go to, well, 45 minutes, but my trainer wasn't feeling well, so we didn't do it. So I started working at eight o'clock. Then I did lunch around one o'clock. So you figure that's about 45 minutes for lunch. You want to go get it, I bring it back. And I didn't stop again until it was time for dinner. Then I went to Loco Pez, got six uh, tacos, chicken tacos, and some salsa and stuff. And, uh, and that was like an hour and 10 minutes or so before I was back. And then I got back, it's like eight o'clock. I may have watched like 12 minutes of TV and and the flyers were on. I actually practiced the piano for 20 minutes, had a phone call, and then ended up sitting at the computer till one in the morning doing work. So it's just a bust my ass day in and day out. People always ask, how much do you work and how often, how much are you doing? Well, it's good 12 to 15 hours, sometimes 16 a day. It's just, it's just what happens. I just sit there and I'm always trying to do something. I don't know if that's good. I don't know if it's bad. It's just what's going on. That's your your lifestyle, I feel like. I mean, you enjoy it just as much as I do. anybody else likes to enjoy love, going out on the weekends or well, something. Well, that's true. I mean, I go out, but I barely go. I mean, I go out, yeah. but I would love other things to do. I'm going to maybe start taking the yoga. I hear girls go to yoga. <laughs> I hear there's a nice yoga well, you instructor. You got yoga mat now. I got my purple yoga mats. Purple on, uh, sorry, pink yo- yoga mats. Pink on one side and it's red on the other. Kind of sounds like <laughs> the women of yoga. It's all pink. <laughs> It's all pink. Doesn't yeah. matter. No. Keep moving. Yeah. Um, so so you have that. I, I, I don't know. I, I got the piano, but I want to do things. Anyway, anyway, on to the show, Stephen. We're recording My Angle this week with the Nikon D4S. This is the first time we are doing this, so we don't know the differences between the 4 and the 4S in terms of how we're shooting it. We try to set it similar or go off the screen, but there could be some discrepancies, so we'll have to, Stephen will have to see when he gets done editing. But what, what was the first thing you noticed when you turned it on? Uh, the screen. The, it has like a slightly different font, and it's much, much sharper. Yeah, it, it, it has that feel. And then when you were changing the tint? Yeah, the tint is my favorite part. It has, uh, instead of going like one stop or whatever it's considered up for tint, moving magenta or green shifting, now you can do quarter increments like 0.25, 0.5, 0.75, which is perfect because it's always a little too green or too magenta or something like that. So now we can really fine tune it for raw talk. And that's where it comes into the the term saying it's more refined. Mm-hmm. People are asking me, oh, is there, or people that don't know, that aren't in the know because they don't use the pro bodies say, well, it's not really a big upgrade. Well, no, it's not a huge upgrade, but should Nikon sit on their ass or Canon for that matter, sit on their ass for two years, put out a camera and then not refine it and be, and put out a middle of the road, you know, somewhere the middle of the road type, not middle of the road, but 
they replace them every four years. Mm-hmm. So every two years, why not put out a more refined one while you're working on the next generation? There's no reason to sit behind when you can make upgrades. The new sensor, we know that the high ISO capability is much better. You, you've seen that in my sample images at 400, and, well, forget the 409,600, <laughs> but at 26,500, I photographed my dad standing in a place that was in total darkness and you saw what I was able. I believe in a thing called love. Just listen to the rhythm of my heart. And this man did a rip right now. This is just a different thing. I believe in a thing called love. <laughs> you know that song, Stephen? <laughs> nope. Justin Hawkins. The darkness. The darkness. <laughs> I believe in a thing called love. I had to think. Like, I was like, why are you singing that? And then I remembered. I said, you said darkness. darkness. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I photographed my dad just standing there in the middle of darkness and everything was good. Like I was able to pull the file out of the raw file with not much problem at all. Now, actually, that was, did I edit? No, I was pulling it out of the JPEG file, not even the raw file. Wow. The- I, and I, wait, 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 before you do, I did download raw uh, 8.4 for Photoshop because I downloaded the 30 day free trial. Gotcha. Um, man, Photoshop for editing raw files sucks. <laughs> not the not the quality that you get, just the slider. It's not refined. Lightroom's refined. Go yeah, ahead. I agree. Uh, for the the ISO sample you put up, the 25,600, I mean, that's probably, from just seeing on the screen, it's probably equivalent to my 5D at like 8,000, maybe 10,000 or I, so, which is incredible. I don't know where to equate it to, but you know, when you zoom in one-to-one, that's when you start to see some smoothing going on. Yeah. But I had all the noise reduction off. You have the, I have it off, too, so, as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's raw. We'll take care of the raw file mm-hmm. later, and I'm really happy with the results. So I made some notes here. Uh... Okay. Yes. Here's one for you guys to listen to. Listen closely. Turn up your turn up your uh, turn up your uh, spe- turn up the radio. Uh, I think of uh, oh, what was it? Billy Madison when he's like, "Listen up, everybody. Turn up your uh, what are they? Hearing aids. Hearing aids or something like that." When he goes in, the, where all the ladies That's are very knitting. disrespectful. What? That's very disrespectful. <laughs> That's what of you people remi- hearing aids. That's what you made I'm me kidding. remind. So earmuffs, you real quick, for the kids. This is what I think about the Nikon D4S. The biggest addition to it is now it has more nipples. Oh, yeah. Nikon D4S with more nipples. Uh, Yeah, but those nipples actually work better. There's a function to those nipples to help you move. You notice the old ones were rubber. This has a more plasticky feel, but your finger sticks to the nipples better (laughs) and then rotates the focus where you want it. It's just the little things, like you said. It it grips much better. That's another first thing I noticed. I was like, oh, look at this. You got new nipples. The buttons are shaped better. Yeah. Just things are refined, and then the autofocus, because I did that shoot of the dog, my neighbor's dog, Corona, running, and I shot 33 frames in three seconds. That's insane. Now, yes, it's 11 frames a second, so it was exactly 33 frames, the dog running towards me using the new group area AF. Mm Mm-hmm. And the first twenty-seven, first twenty-five shots in a row were in focus, I believe. Uh, when I say when I say in focus, I don't mean I mean that they're they're usable images. Like it's focused on the face. Uh, now, shooting a white dog is is a lot harder, oh, yeah. especially shooting something running towards you. It's one of the hardest things for cameras to do. But and she had a blue collar on, so sometimes it, it tracked that more than the face because that's what the contrast was picking up. But the shots were right on where they needed to be and the ones that missed didn't miss they just missed maybe because it was on the hind legs but the funny thing is that the last three shots are in focus as the dog got really close to me it's just great that it was able to track all the way from there all the way to me and get that so i am happy with the so far i can't give you a full review yet because i've just started using it and i really don't want to jump to conclusion mats about it what anything else (laughs) I don't know. I'm okay. trying to think of what else there was uh, to talk about as far as that goes. Well, the evolutionary change. The other thing I want to talk about, people always ask, how do you, how do you afford buying these new cameras every two years? It's, it's very simple. I'm not spending $6,500 for this new camera. That's what it sells for, $6,500. But I, sell my D4, I sold my D4 locally and was able to get what I wanted out of it, and I take that cash and roll that right into the new camera, which makes it below $2,000 for me, roughly. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good upgrade. Give or take, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not bad. So every two years, I'm working. So what people need to realize is that this is a working professional camera. And when you're using a pro body, you are using something that the 99% of the world is not going to use. Now, you understand things differently when it comes to changing bodies there's a reason i went from the d4 to the d4s because of the refinements and i will do the same thing when the d5 come 
<laughs> I will do the same Place thing. Yeah, I will do the same thing when the uh, when the D five comes out. I'll sell the D four S, roll into the other one. Hopefully, it's not. 6500 plus 500 hopefully it's not seven thousand dollars because that seems to be the case and i also want to say that going back to the beginning i paid like thirty three hundred dollars or something for the d2h and it's just progressively gotten more and more, more expensive. expensive it is astronomical i think that it's just absurd that i i sat here driving home and i was like i just spent sixty five hundred dollars on a freaking camera <laughs> i could buy a 4k tv plus a d 800 or something for that price. Yeah. You know, 6,500, you could buy a car. You could. There's so many different things that you could do. I just sat there and I was like, this is pure insanity. But when you're a working professional, every little nuance of a camera that can give you a better chance of getting a shot is why we're professionals because and why we buy the best gear that we can because that's what sets us apart from everybody else. We know what we're doing and we know how to use the gear to its full extent. And I mean, think about medium format. If you went that route, that's you're you're buying a brand new car or potentially, you know, rent for a couple of years or something. You know what I mean? That's insane. All right. Time for the photo news, Stephen. Oh, photo I went news. off on a, a little tangent, but I, I think it was a good tangent. It was a good tangent. Uh, first up, we have <laughs> Red Bull Media House. They released some incredible behind the scenes video of how they shot a recent Red Bull uh, ski spot or commercial uh, instead of having a copter not a drone, follow alongside the pro skier. They actually had the cameraman on skis following him uh, with a movie stabilization setup. Uh, do you want to chime in on this? Oh, I was shaking my head not in the no, that's wrong. My head shake was for, insane. it was freaking insane yeah. to watch. So it was awesome. Going. So it was shot with a slow motion Phantom Miro, the smaller version, attached to a movie M10 rig. The cameraman was going about 50 miles an hour through the air for about 70 feet or so, landing pretty hard too, and yet the footage was still crazy, crazy stabilized. The camera was controlled by a remote at the top of the jump. When you so say control, go ahead. By remote, yeah. So basically the cameraman is just actually pointing guess, it framing yeah the actual camera and the angle but there's actually someone at the top who is what doing somebody's else. wirelessly controlling the autofocus yep and making sure that it is, or controlling the focus and making sure it's where it needs to be yeah this whole behind the scenes video though is just awesome i mean for someone for them to do something like this is, is really it's risky first of all i mean those phantom cameras are not cheap no Imagine, and I guess they had to find someone who's a pretty good skier and a cam camera operator well, exactly. at the same time. That's what I was thinking is yeah. this guy has to know everything. I mean, I haven't been skiing. I think I skied once when I was 10. I'd like to do it again. Uh, I'd like to try, I think, because I've got good edge control from hockey. Uh, so it it's an amazing video to watch. The fact that they're going that fast and that close to the guy as he's jumping. There's The only other way you could kind of get that is if you set up a cable cam and yeah. you... And you had it going next to it but to have a movie like this or, or a copter or or the copter or drone copter whatever you <laughs> want to call it uh you can my logo is so cool i got distracted by the hair of the logo finish finish your comment um it's just really fascinating to watch so definitely go over there onto the photo news and for anybody who's wondering why we don't put the links to everything right down below uh we do click on the link down below on youtube and that's going to take you over to the photo news stories yep Next story. As we comment every week about that. Uh, but I wanted to also comment about that where they showed in the behind the scenes video, he's actually literally like inches away from the skier as he's going up. So and these days, again, like you're, you're not just a photographer, you're you may be a skier too or whatever. Well, it, it just shows you that the evolution and the change that's going into creativity. Yeah. The tools that we have now to go and create are pretty damn amazing. And we just talked about the copters, um, the quadricopter, like uh, there's uh, what's that called? Sutter? The DJI Phantom. The DJI Phantom. Phantom 2, I'll just talk about a phone call I got the other day. Mm -hmm. Out of nowhere, I got an email, and I was thinking about this guy. A guy who was formerly at Lytro is now somewhere else. He's now at DJI, and he reached out to see if I wanted to play with one of these things. And I've wanted to get a hold of one of these, but oh, it's yeah. one of the most popular things out there. They don't even have that many units because everyone they make, they're selling right now. Now, it's a China-based company that's uh, trying to that, that shot onto the scene making these things. F Stoppers did a fantastic uh, video with it in the Bahamas that looked great. Basically, it's a quadricopter that you can put, you can remote control. They have two units. They have one that has a camera built into it, which I think I would never buy because I don't want their camera. Mm -hmm. And then they have the other one that has a gimbal that you can purchase with a GoPro. You can put a GoPro on it and you can control the whole thing and it's stable and it's amazing. It runs $899 with the gimbal. Plus, you can then get this wireless kit set up so that you can wirelessly see what you're doing. The thing will go up to a mile away. Wow. And that's why you need your wireless vision to yeah. see what you're doing. He talked about some people have goggles that can actually 
they feel like they're they actually flying. flying like first person point basically point of view? yes they're watching through the goggles and they're that good to know how they control it wow. so my concern was well what happens if well how do you fly it because they now have an auto stabilization mode if you release the sticks and they go back to the center it's going to just hover wherever it is um then if you it loses contact if you gave it enough time through the gps satellite uh, unit to find a home base like it will tell you where it's at exactly and then if it loses connection, it will automatically fly back to that home base. Wow. So if we're sitting here in the loft and we set it up on the table and we flew it over to the other side and it lost connection wireless signal, it would fly back to where it started as long as you gave it enough time uh, to, to find the, the, the information it needed. So I'm looking forward to getting this thing. And the reason I brought that up is because it's going to become more and more prevalent with people using these things. And it's going to become something like the norm. So then people are going to have to take it to an extreme and find the next thing to do that sets them apart. Like GoPros. You've seen so much GoPro footage and GoPro is going to continue to evolve. Oh, yeah. But a lot of the stuff starts to become repetitive. And it's only the extreme, extreme stuff that sets it uh, sets everything apart from the rest. It's funny that you, you brought up the whole DJI uh What's it called again? The Phantom. By Phantom the way, 25 two. minutes Twenty five minutes on a battery charge, which they said is better than the first one that only got 12. New batteries are 160 bucks. Wow. Uh, but it's funny because I was watching, I remember watching a video with Chase Jarvis like trying out one of the coppers. Uh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. It was a D5100. Uh, yeah. And I don't know what brand it was, copter wise. But anyway, he was flying it and like totally crashed it somewhere. But this is nice with having that, uh, you know, auto yeah. go back to the home base mode yep. and just hover and all that kind of it, stuff. It seems to be a very smart product. And, oh, yeah. and talking to him about, you know, all the questions that I had, he had great answers for me. Uh, it's a like I said, it's a China-based company that should just follow in the footsteps of what GoPro's done. Or I was thinking that they would get acquired by somebody like GoPro, you know, uh, a company like GoPro that built in their cameras, maybe. Well, not even built in, but just have the option to. This is a new thing, so it may be a good play for them to to sell to somebody. Do you know what the weight limit is for one of those? Is uh, it only a it, GoPro that can well, go Well, no, they, he talked about using some kind of Ricoh camera with an APS-C sensor. Okay. So I'm not really fully sure of those specs. Okay. Uh, so moving on, we have Nikon. They introduced a new video series called Nikon Behind the Scenes. Uh, the series is dedicated to showcasing and highlighting the skills that intermediate level photographers need to take their photography to the next level. Uh, the first video is now online featuring a photo shoot with Joe McNally where he talks about the fundamentals of basically natural light and flash photography. Uh, more videos will be out every couple of weeks, which will feature content from Corey Rich uh, as well as Tamara Lackey and we'll cover... Tamara Lackey. <laughs> Tamara? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. I don't know. And we'll cover subjects ranging from posing, shooting landscapes, gear, and more. I'm terrible with names, so it's I right. mispronounce everybody, even though I've watched several videos from her, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> moving on, Brooklyn based photographer. Well, hold on, hold on. I watched the first video. Uh huh. It's only three and a half minutes. I want to see more information from them. I don't think it gave us enough. Well, if it's going to be a series, yeah, it should be more. That almost looked like a teaser that they showcased. Uh, it, but it did. Like you want to get in depth, put up twenty minutes of content. And I hope that my uh, PR rep won't get pissed at me for saying that. But that that's the thing. We'll have to see what the whole series looks like. If this is just the first step, what Joe McNally's doing, and then he's making five or six, and it all builds off of that, then yes. But it really just said, here's what I'm shooting. Here's why I'm doing it, which is all good stuff for three and a half minutes. But it's kind of, you know, not to plug the flash guide that we did, but we go in depth on the shoots. You see what we're doing and then we break it down for you shot by shot, setting for setting to show you how to do it. Yeah. So that's what I want to see. I want to see more of that, if, especially if it's from a big company like this. Yeah, like you said, maybe it's part of a, a bigger series, like a, maybe a five-part series from Joe McNally and five-part from Corey Rich we'll and so see. forth. Yeah, we'll see. So Brooklyn-based photographer, this is a pretty big story this week, Daniel Arnold made over 15 grand selling prints on Instagram in a single day. Uh, with him not having enough money to pay for his next month's rent, he took to Instagram and told his followers, which he has about 40000 I think he had about 20 Twenty-five thousand at the time, but now he's up to forty thousand. Uh, that they could order a four by six print of any photo that he took um, for one hundred and fifty bucks for one day only. So here's what his caption said about selling the actual prints. In quotes, uh, "Hello, I just turned thirty-four this second. For one day only, I am selling four by six prints of whatever you want from my Instagram archive for one hundred and fifty dollars each. I swear I will never sell anything this cheap again. If you're interested, send a screenshot of the photo of your choice to." ArnoldDaniel at gmail.com and I will send a PayPal invoice followed by a, sync, a signed print, easy peasy, uh, happy my birthday, I love you, end quote. So basically he put this up and he ended up selling 100 prints in a single day and he's still apparently, I think, making money off it. He didn't cut it off, I don't think. So that's the dilemma 
when it comes to business. Yeah. So fascinating. Love the fact that this happened. It shows people out there that were bitching about YouTube, uh, about Instagram, stealing your work and doing all this. If you build a following, you can ask your following. As Gary Vee says, you you give, 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 and you ask. Mm-hmm. The guy has given, given, given thousands of images that he's captured street photography wise with his iPhone. He even had a larger following and then he got kicked off because of a uh, nudity issue. So you have to be very careful with that on Instagram. But he reached out to his followers who follow what he's doing and don't pay a dime to do it just like you guys watching the website the majority of what i do is free and if you want to purchase something thank you mm-hmm. and so what he did is he said for 150 dollars, he priced it at an astronomical 150 dollars. it's a lot of money but if people are willing to pay that if you he, he first off he said it was scarcity this is only going to run for 24 hours mm-hmm. so people need to jump on it and take action he thought it out very well by saying because t- you can't you can't really uh, click a link on, on Instagram other than your home link. So he said, email me here with a screenshot, your address, PayPal thing, and, and do it. All he needed at $150 to raise the fifteen grand was to get 100 people to do it. Yep. That's much better than saying $5 a print because you want to value something at a higher price. And this is something I struggle with myself when it comes to, I mean, with weddings, I like doing high ticket high ticket weddings, right? Because you have to do less of them to make more money for, for a year or to make the same amount, you do less, uh, which is which is good. But when it comes to pricing, the video guides, the first guide was 67 bucks. The second guide was 67 bucks. Could I sell it for 150? I think so. Would I sell as many? I don't know. But would I sell enough at that price to justify the, the difference? I don't know. And this is what I'm going through with the, the DSLR guide that's coming up. The, the video guide is... It's going to be a more expensive guide because it's even more in depth. And and I'll just tell you what Todd and I were talking about. And and you'll get to see the video and Sutter will get to see the video and people who have signed up for that email list, uh, some of them will get the option or the, the possibility randomly to go ahead and preview it for us. But I think it's going to be more expensive. And the fact that the way that we put it is that it's like having a college, you're going to a college class that costs you thousand, what, $20,000? You know, you're going to college for a year. Semester could be, Ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, and you're going there for how many months? You know, and this thing is going to pack the fundamentals and the basics that you need to you need to learn. That it's the same thing that you would learn in class, at least I think so. Uh, so we're squeezing it into a into a smaller product that's going to be a hell of a lot less expensive than going to college. So maybe you'd spend one hundred and fifty bucks for something like that. That's five or six hours of content. I don't know. I'm just rambling now. I do think $150 is, is pretty outrageous, in my opinion, for an iPhone shot Instagram image that I was kind of flipping through them, and some of them are like blurry, or, or composition is kind of all over the place, and I mean, yeah, it's limited edition, I get it, but 150 bucks Scarcity? The guy has built a following of people, so it doesn't matter whether you, you're good at what you do, or you're just very good at marketing what you do. People will tell you that's the same thing with me, right? Uh, you're just a good marketer. You're a terrible, terrible, terrible photographer, which I obviously disagree with. But So the scarcity is that it's going to go on for 24 hours. It's $150 a print, so it's very expensive. He has to sell less of them to make more money. Sold 100 kept selling them. The dilemma is, if you say that you're going to run it for 24 hours, you better either end it or end it shortly after that. Well, it's like the whole sale thing that we talked about before. You're going to devalue because you can't do it again. Yeah. So if you did it once now, and then in five or six months, you bring it back and you say, the first time I did this, it was $150 and it ran for 24 hours. I'm going to do it two for 200. I'm going to do two four by sixes for $200 and I'm only going to sell a hundred of them. It's going to sell like that. Oh, yeah. And that time you're not doing 24 hours or you could open it up to 24 hours again because then you can limit you. You can. There's ways if, if you say you're going to sell 100 that you either sell 100 or you sell more. It's up to you. You determine that or you do limited runs. You see this now? This is the January run. These are my photos that I want to do. I'm only going to do five of this one, five of this one, five of this one of, of 20 different ones and sell them. I, I think part of the issue is you get you kind of get that taste of money and you get a little greedy and you want to continue the sale, but that may hurt the future of what you're trying to do. Because then if you say 24 hours and you create that scarcity and then you just blow past that, there's no urgency in the future for people to jump on it. So you may be hurting yourself. I think it's cool. Also, he had a friend who writes for Forbes. Yeah. It didn't hurt him that he Obviously was able to get it out there out. because I'm sure there's nobody's written an article about me selling my video guides, right? Because 
I I would never brought it to anybody, but that's you can do. That's what happens. Who you know, how it gets out there, and then once it got out there on Forbes, did he sell more? Who knows? I just think I would at least want an eight by ten out of that. If I'm spending 150 bucks, I mean, I don't know. That's me personally. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, And speaking of marketing on Instagram, the app released a new video featuring tips on marketing with the mobile app, along with a new uh, blog post breaking down recent successful campaigns like Ben and Jerry's ad that we saw on uh, Instagram. Some tips include, and these are just the basic, basic tips. They really go in depth on the blog post about this. But number one, be true to your brand. Number two, share experiences. Number three, find beauty everywhere. Number four, inspire action. Number five, know your audience. So they obviously, again, break it down in depth on the blog, which you definitely need to check out. This is marketing. Yeah. This is, those are five basic marketing tips that some people may think are, are, are basic and and simple. And then maybe epiphanies to other people. Those are just things that seem to be common sense to me when I was doing, you know, creating things, but these are great tips. If you are looking to do that, not everybody's going to build a following. Not everybody wants to build a following, but if you want to do that, there's ways, I mean, look, all those people who were up in arms and jumped off of Instagram when they said they're going to sell your work are so wrong at this point that it's not even funny because they haven't done it yet. And you can reach a ton of people and make money yourself. Yeah. So prime example of what we just talked about. I'm getting off of Instagram. Just kidding. (laughs) Uh, Zenfolio implemented raw file storage into their site. Users now have the option to store raw, DNG, NEF, PSD, and other source files alongside your images. Uh, It's available to all accounts levels beyond basic. Unlimited premium and premium business accounts come with two gigs of raw storage free with a maximum size per individual file limit of two gigabytes each. What you look at, you're looking at me like I'm crazy. How many, how much storage? Only two gigs to start off with and then you pay for extra. How much? It's free for two gigs, and then you pay 0.085 uh, per gig a month. So basically, 100 gigs of raw storage is 850 a month, which really isn't that bad. 100 gigs? 100 gigs is 850 a month for raw storage. $8.50. Mm-hmm. And they... Times it by 10 is $85. No, 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 no. It's 850 a month. I'm saying it's 0.085 per gig a month. I got that. And 100 gigs is $8.50. Correct. So that makes 1,000 gigs... Uh, a hundred and eight dollars, hundred and eighty-five dollars, right? Mm-hmm. I think you move the decimal over two spots. I don't know. We're both Something obviously like not the best at math. I think it's one hundred and eighty-five dollars, which for a hundred for that's a terabyte. Yeah, it's not bad. It's like Amazon Glacier. I guarantee you, it's through Amazon. Yeah, it's not bad. But I guarantee you, this is through Amazon. Yeah, I don't think everyone's going to be uploading every raw file they have as well. I mean, Zenfolio being more portfolio site, you're not going to. Be literally uploading. Everything. I think you're going to see some uh, some some movement in this in this arena. Not the uploading of raw files, but you're going to see. You got Smug Mug. You've got Zenfolio. You've got a bunch of other people in the same field that do certain things well, but their websites look like crap. Yeah, the Zenfolio websites not very good. Just not. They're hard to use, hard to do, hard to get, and don't look good. Uh, Smug Mug was the one that I looked at when I was deciding, am I going to go with Squarespace or Smug Mug? Smug Mug is trying to do what Squarespace is doing. They're just many, many, many years behind. They may have enough money to make it happen, but I don't know that Zenfolio does. I think you may see some joining of forces and companies in the next year or two uh, in this field because I don't think most. I don't think they're going to make it. Hmm. So. That's just me off the top of my head just saying that stuff. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Uh, moving forward, this news hits as we were wrapping up Raw Talk last week. Literally, I think we just ended and we found out about this stuff. Uh, but it's still important to bring up. So that's why we're bringing it up nearly two weeks later. But we want to actually break it down yeah, and talk no, about it this That's what week. we do. We, yeah. talk about, we talk about it. We just we distill it we down. We discuss it. Uh, one day, maybe we'll do more action on putting up the news as it happens, but I love our commentary and discussions. Well, and I think it's, a lot of it's just do. more of a recap. I mean, I love when people comment about like, oh, I found out about that a week ago. It's, it's, we're just discussing that week's right. news. It's so not nothing it. groundbreaking. Uh, so Getty made a huge announcement. They introduced an embed feature, feature creating an easy, legal, and free way for people to share the agency's images for non-commercial use. Uh, again, keyword word non-commercial they came to this action in hopes in, to fight online infringement and the images are unwatermarked uh so they still but they still cast the agency's logo below along with the proper credit to the photographer which is nice uh, there's also twitter and tumblr share buttons for those that are too lazy to basically copy the html code now there was a little hiccup when this first came out where apparently you could get rid of the logo and the um actual credit from the photographer on the bottom but getty has since fixed that mm. um since uh, implementing this so so you and, I, you and i had this discussion 
if I was a Getty photographer, would I be happy that they're giving this stuff away for free? Do I think it will add to more people buying images? Absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, this is an interesting play. Very interesting because uh, iStock Photo is going to start doing the same thing. They're also a subsidiary of, of Getty. Now, they said non-commercial use. You and I went on to Petapixel and saw that they are using one of the embeds from, uh, from Getty. But isn't that commercial use? Somebody needs to explain to me what non-commercial use is because I run a website that I get money off of. So if I'm sharing an image from Getty, is that commercial use? I... I, I need to get them on the phone to explain to me because if you're like per Perez Hilton, they went after Perez Hilton all those years ago oh, yeah. for using images, then he bought one of those licenses so that he could use whatever he wants. Are you saying now that he can just use those images or is he a commercial website? So, shit, <laughs> I keep hitting these buttons by accident. And if you read a photo editor ever, he had an interesting story about it. He thinks that this is a play to raise the value of the company before the company that bought them for $1.2 billion decides to sell them because they took out a loan on the money. And the, the loan note comes due in, the, in 2015 or 16. So they may be trying to, to dump the company to pay that off. So they may be trying to just raise the value. Wow. And they think that sharing this, are you raising your hand? No, you're just putting your hand up. Anyway, I don't know. <laughs> you get distracted so easy. I, well, I do. Like squirrel. <laughs> anyway, so he had an interesting story. Story a photo editor. This is an interesting thing. I, I don't see how the free play turns into people actually buying licenses, especially if you're a website. You're commercial. You're selling. You're making money. So. We need to get some education yeah, I mean, if you're, on that. If you're, if you're posting ads and getting revenue from that. Now, also, just re regarding what you were talking about with Petapixel posting the embed image on that post, I don't know with copyright infringement if that really matters when it comes to news sources because I think it's considered fair use when you're using it for news purposes. I, but but it's you still, didn't pay for the rights to use it, those images from Getty. Yeah, that's the thing. I you mean, can't just grab an image and, and use it and say that it's uh, you didn't pay for it. But what I have come under the conclusion, or at least what I have kind of been taught through school um, when I did media law, is that I media thought law. it's considered okay when it's a news coverage post or something along those lines. I don't know how it comes okay. with articles, but at least with, that's how news, you know, actual NBC 10 and stuff can get away with that kind of stuff. NBC 10. So, uh, <laughs> so any what, other news station. Uh, Sheila Parveen. Ooh. Sheila Parveen. <laughs> oh Google yeah. Her. She lived in my buddy's building. Really? Guys, Google Sheila Parveen one day. She's a Sephardic girl as in Middle Eastern. Uh, she's like thin, big boot. She's, she's now has 90, 99% more nipples like the D4S. And she's, <laughs> she's a very attractive girl who's probably dating a hockey player uh, oh, sure. right about now, which she was Chris, uh, Hartnell, mm -hmm. uh, Scott Hartnell. Um, I'm asking you guys right now, does anybody know a media lawyer out there? Email me, jared at fronosphoto.com. Put me in contact with them. And if the lawyer would like to, well, I'd like to ask them questions and, not have them try to charge me $4 million to do it because we're <laughs> trying to help people out there. And see, there's another thing on the, with, with lawyers. What, distraction? Anyway, <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is I was listening to Gary V do a spreecast yesterday, um, which I haven't done a spreecast in a while, and he was answering questions. And somebody there were beginner people asking questions. And he's like, the best thing that you can do is give away your knowledge. Now, that's his opinion, and I abide by that too that i felt that that was the best thing to do as well i think a lawyer would crush it in the industry if they would you know better call saul you know you become known as the person the guy that is the fair lawyer the lawyer that gives out information the lawyer that gets this because you end up getting the calls to do the actual jobs that you you, you cast your net by throwing out those you know those free things that's true and you that draw people true. in so that when they do have an issue they know to go to you because you've branded yourself as that lawyer. You know, that's the stuff that I don't understand. Anyway, lawyers charging you for staples. Next. Well, story. and we also talked about that one story about the in my opinion we were talking about, yeah. about that kind of stuff. Like that, Allegedly. Allegedly, and, and in my opinion, like when you use those kind of words, you're still influencing your, your listeners and stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's technically, could that still be libel? It's, it's a whole fine line when it comes to that stuff. So I want to find a media lawyer, yeah. a libel lawyer, somebody that can explain this stuff in in. You can use legal terms, and then I'll ask you questions and distill it down for the people that the layman out there like me. <laughs> and me. 
Uh, so this news hit as we were, uh, nope, just talked about that. Just kidding. And <laughs> next news story, Stephen. According to an email forwarded from a Petapixel reader, uh, Getty has ended their relationship with Flickr to license their images. Um, so this is moving forward with that story. No word on why and no official announcement has been made just yet, but the license, this photo on Getty Images option will soon come to an end apparently. Uh, so I think that they're going to end up striking a deal for it. I mean, I, I don't see so. why they can't. I don't see why they wouldn't. Yeah. Um, it's a, a great... <laughs> I think we're going to get into more. We were talking about this earlier. There's that app I want to talk about that Gary Vee hooked me up with. I don't want to say what it is yet because I want to wait to talk to them Mm -hmm. to get all the information about it. But I've seen a shift myself in technology where people are going towards they're building apps where people can make money off the apps and give it back and share with the community. Some of it's a lot. Some of it's a little. You see 500 picks. Is that a story coming up or no? That was last week. Uh, That was last week. And what you did tell me I was right. You were right. Yeah, they did have the 30-70 split the opposite way to begin with. Right. So last week we did a story where they were saying 30% would go to the photographer and 70% of the sale would go to the the, uh, 500 picks. Well, they reversed it. It goes the other way. But I'm seeing a big shift to businesses doing this or websites doing this and apps doing this where if you create a photo and you upload it to them and they sell it, they split the money with you or they give you a percentage. It's really an interesting play. Now, it's bringing down the price of certain things where where pet, where uh, 500 picks may sell your image for $200 mm-hmm. and split it. Another app may sell it for 10 and only give you five. So there's that whole Four by six for one hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, or a four by or a or a print for five bucks. You know, it's how you value your stuff. But I think we're gonna see that that Flickr and Getty may come to a, an agreement here. There's like Kill Kenny Cat has that whole exactly, thing with Getty. Yeah. She does it. I don't know what she makes off of it, but the fact that they find her pictures and want to add it to their their roles. Then the other thing is what happens when they start sharing that stuff for free through the Getty thing for embedding that she makes no money off of. Very true. How is that benefiting the photographer? Let's go back to that because I just thought of that. How is that benefiting the photographer that their work is being seen for free? I understand that a lot of the work we put out there is free and, and then it comes back to make us money. But this is Getty who's getting their name built up higher, mm-hmm. more value. They're getting more clicks, more views because the play for them is to probably monetize by ads which is stupid, but that's what they're looking to do. They're looking to generate some revenue it, through their through their images. Are they going to share that with the photographer at the end? And I know this from, I had an agency that I got off, got a, got off of the agency because I loved getting a $10 check for an image of mine that oh, they sold I'm, for $20. It's a nice big check. You know, for 20 bucks. I'm like, seriously, that's the value you guys put on my work or on work in general that you're selling it for $20? And I understand this depends on the usage, but the... The industry has changed a lot, so it's just, I don't know what Getty's doing. They're trying to make money. I don't know that that benefits the photographer very much for them to give it away for nothing, because I wonder what's in their contracts, really. Yeah, that's what I wonder, too. Well, I can call I can call a Getty photographer uh, we had on before, Jeff Fusco. Yeah, that's who I was thinking of so when I first heard Fusco. of this announcement. I'm sure he knows the whole inside scoop with that kind of stuff. I'll give him a call. Yeah, I would love to get his opinion on that. In my opinion. In my opinion, allegedly. uh, Time Magazine teamed up with Gigapan and created a 360-degree panorama from the top of the Freedom Tower. This was really cool. They released a behind-the-scenes video which showcases the testing and trouble they ran into when setting this thing up uh, to get the actual shot. Now, Time had to negotiate with the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey to gain access to the Spire uh, because it's still closed off to the public. One of our readers works on the building really yep that would be really cool just to strap a gopro on he, and get he's a, done it yeah he's done it yeah he works he i follow him uh, frankie pierce i believe is his name is that frankie his name? i follow him we met i met him at the uh, photo plus this year and and he uh yeah i follow his instagram feed so again they had to negotiate with the port authority of new jersey and new york uh, they had to design a rig that would work well in the conditions found at that height which apparently it's 25 mile an hour winds uh, and then actually go on uh, about basically building and testing the rig before they could actually get to the spire. So they had to go off blueprints, that kind of yeah. stuff. Uh, the final image consists of 567 pictures taken with a 5D Mark II uh, and a 100 millimeter lens over the course of five hours on September 28th, 2013. Now this behind the scenes video was just released uh, last week though. I'm but glad they picked that day. What day? Well, it's just like you say September in New York at the top of the building. It's just yeah. like you think, you know. Yeah, well, I hope, thank God it wasn't on, yeah. you know. But uh, yeah, so I mean, it's really interesting to see that. And they also had to, when they actually built this rig, the custom rig, they had to then flip it upside down to get 
the whole 360 degree That's angle cool. and put it together. And when they tested it out too, you'll see in the behind the scenes video that they tested it on like a, the Brooklyn Bridge or something and it completely failed. Like it didn't write any of the images. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. So yeah, they actually... The Gigapan's interesting. I have a Gigapan sitting in the other room. And it works great for us. It worked great for us yeah. out at the park. That was one of the first videos you got, you helped me with. By it the was. Way. Yeah, you're right. Um, the thing with the Gigapan though is that it it's not a very stable thing because it, it, it's it got... It looks like this for anybody watching. It looks like horns, and right in the middle is where it screw has the screw thing, so it's wobbly. If it had two stanchions and the whole thing, I don't, there, yeah. It, if it did from end to end, if it did something a little different, yeah. So that I can see with twenty five mile per hour winds being more difficult. And they brought the uh, the Gigapan guy with them too to make sure nothing goes wrong oh, cool. when they did this whole thing. Uh, moving on, we have a judge of the National Transportation Safety Board, the NTSB, ruled that the FAA has no authority to regulate. Copters, or drones as some people like to call them, striking down a six-year-old ban on commercial drones. Uh, the ruling was a result of a case about a Swiss copter operator who was being sued for ten grand from the FAA for flying a copter around the University of Virginia for a commercial he was shooting for the actual college. Now, apparently the FAA thought commercial drones... I'm just going to say drone for now. That's fine. <laughs> uh, they thought commercial drone flight had been illegal since 2007. However, according to the court papers, they never actually created an enforceable law. Uh, or a rule, um, although they did create a policy statement, which apparently doesn't uh, go with the public. It doesn't have anything to do with that. So commercial mm -hmm. drone flight is now considered legal, again, for now, but we'll see if the FAA actually makes a law about it. Well, they're going to start what. regulating the signals and things like that, because yeah. you can see it becoming a problem. Like Definitely. Sutter over here launching a weather balloon. You told us when you launched a weather balloon, did you have to check with flight patterns? Um, if it was any bigger than what I was doing, I made it so it was just big enough to be under the requirements where you had to do your FAA checks. Hmm. So even that, you know, if you get 20 people launching these weather balloons, uh, it could cause a problem for yeah. flying aircraft. Well, I wonder what the, the exact rule is. Like, does it have to fly a certain height or well, here, something the, like the that? Fact that? The fact that the, the Phantom 2 will go a mile away from you, so out of sight, out of earshot, out mm -hmm. of everything, is pretty interesting. There's going to be some regulations and laws coming about this stuff because it's going to become more prevalent. More people are going to be flying these things. And you, in, in a city, you also have to be careful about people that think they are military drones that are there to kill them. There's a guy in who was in Egypt who was flying a drone and got arrested because they thought he was spying. This is why we're trying to get rid of saying the word drone. drone we're because trying to if you go to the Middle East and you say drone, yeah, it makes sense. And you say drone here. What do I think of drone? I think of the thing that flies and, sh and, and kills Taliban and terrorists. Yeah. If you say quadricopter, I think of a quadricopter with four four thingies and they spin. Yeah. Yeah, I just never hear it being referred to as a copter, but I tr I'm trying my best to refer well, to it as a copter. He yelled at me because he's like, it's, it's a copter. That's well, what we refer to it as. And I wrote drone down in the entire news stories this week, so I'm trying to what replace else? it as I'm going along. Uh, the NASA Goddard photo and video Flickr account uploaded a set of 43 just stunning images of the universe. They released the images prior to the premiere of the global TV series remake, Cosmos. Uh, they're full res images, complete with a story behind each photo in the Flickr description so you can read up about it, what exactly it is, all that kind of stuff, when it was taken. Now, every week at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday, their Twitter accounts, which is at NASA Goddard and at NASA Goddard Picks with a P-I-X, will live tweet pictures of the universe during that show, adding them to that Did you Flickr watch the account. show? I have not watched the show now. I watched it. I got Good? bored. Uh, yeah, fascinating. Yeah. It's fascinating. I still got bored. Um, I don't know because I guess I was watching True Detective and that stuff was exciting. Yeah. Uh, you know, but Neil deGrasse Tyson, I believe is his name. He's the guy who's do he's doing the uh, Carl Sagan role. Carl Sagan was the guy. The, you, the original, did you ever right? see the movie Contact? Yeah. Okay. You ever see the movie Contact, Sutter? I might yeah, have. Yeah, no. So anyway, he, Carl Sagan was a visionary of his time. He's one of those guys who had these theories about black holes, theories about the, the universe. Just a guy that was just so fascinating. He died of cancer, unfortunately. He would love to have seen what we were doing today. He was one of the guys who pushed technology to where it was just from the thinking that he had. That's why I'm so fascinated with Carl Sagan and what he did. Now, this cosmos, it's, it's just unbelievably... I guess it's painstaking to think and try to wrap your head around infinite space. How big it is. Or how yeah. something started from an atom that exploded and that's the Big Bang and we ended up here, right? So it's just 
unbelievable. And the photos, the, I believe there's other things out there. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that we're the, the, the world revolves around us or the, the universe, we're the only l- organisms in the universe that are humans or sustainable. There's got to be somewhere else in a galaxy far, far away <laughs> uh, another something similar it's got to or be. different. There, it's just with how many planets and Earths. The, trying to wrap your head when you look at the photos that nasa puts up and you see from the hubble that this was like this was uh 20 million years ago and this light is just getting to us now and you see these little specks and every speck is a galaxy galaxy, and inside the galaxy there's there's other suns and there's other planets and other things and there's a trillion of those or more it's just you. How can you think that there's not something out there? Uh, that's that whole creationism thing goes on the other side. If anybody's into creationism, they think that God created this. Uh, we're not going to get into that discussion. But science, what Neil deGrasse, what Neil, I'll call him Tyson, what he said in science is that you do your research, you have these theories, and you try to prove them or disprove them. And when they're proven as facts, then you move on to the next thing. You have to keep trying. It's science. You have these ideas. You push for the answers. And if you find them, you move on. And if you don't find them, you keep trying to either prove them as right or you until you can finally prove that they're not right. It's fascinating. Space exploration is amazing. We need to do more of that. Uh, and I don't even know what the story was. Oh, I know where I was going with that. So they put up the full res images, mm-hmm. which are huge, right? You can print them. You can do whatever the hell you want with them because NASA is a government agency Mm -hmm. that takes funding from us, our taxpayer dollars, which I just got done my taxes. And uh, so they, we can print those images. Adorama pics. I can print metal, metal aluminized prints. I could have prints made that can be wallpaper of, of the nebulas and gout. It's fascinating. I always, uh, every year when they put out like the new version of the earth, picture i always download the full res of that which is usually like eight thousand by eight thousand you can blow it up and i i've been meaning to print it out for the longest we'll time we'll do it i got credit i know yeah i definitely want to print it out one day but it's still sitting on my desktop that actual file i'm waiting to be printed and also speaking of just what else is out there there's an image that they have on the Flickr account that i was checking out it's the sun and then it has an actual scaled image of the earth in the background it's just we're just a little speck yeah in this entire solar system or entire universe in a world where we are a tiny speck in the universe earth is not alone coming to you in a new coming to you in a movie theater in 2020 exploration of the known universe goes well beyond where we are today welcome to nasa bitch (laughs) um it it's uh it's pretty fascinating stuff and uh yeah just the fact yeah we're not alone okay next story I'll wait Sorry, I'm just writing. making a note to add some reverb on your voice and uh, some some movie reverb on that. <laughs> Welcome to NASA, the next frontier of the universe, none known to us, because we are expanding at an infinite space, and you don't know what goes beyond where we are. But are we alone? We don't know, because coming out of left field from the Tyson Nebula out in C twenty seven dash forty two come these aliens, and what do the aliens say? I'm coming for you, bitch. In theaters, January 2017. That was pretty good. Thank that you. Was, that was good. So do you su- want to go see that movie? I do. It sounds pretty enticing. It, it sounds epic. Now, what's really awesome the least. is the, uh, the, the two satellites that we sent out in the 70s, mm-hmm. uh, the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, we sent them in opposite directions. One went this way, one went that way, one passed Pluto, one is... We think getting close to interstellar space, which at what point the sun's gravity or the sun's rays no longer reach or affect, play a role in affecting the Voyager. They haven't decided whether it's reached interstellar space yet because nothing that we've done has gone this far. It's been traveling since the 70s. Wow. It's still operating. It has a nuclear uh, core to it. That's how it's being powered. It's still sending back signals and images. I don't know how they did digital images that's, back then. That's the crazy part. I don't understand that, but they built this thing. I am so fascinated by space exploration. Me too, man. I may want to just take a trip to Orlando. You want to take a trip to Orlando and just go to the space center? Why not just go to like Mars? <laughs> how many weeks will you be on Mars? Uh, the rest of your life. The right? proper answer is... 
Two oh my weeks. god, this movie again. Two <laughs> weeks. This is like the fifth time I messed right, this up. Next story. Um, so we have Subaru. They released an awesome commercial featuring Subaru. <laughs> It's a new commercial featuring a 3D printed RC model, one of a kind apparently, of a Subaru WRX STI versus 30,000 stick bombs on a miniature track, which I didn't know what stick bombs were until I watched this video. What's a stick bomb? Stick bomb is apparently, it's just a bunch of sticks put together, kind of like a domino effect and just like goes down like dominoes, a bunch of like little toothpick stick kind of things. I don't know. You got to watch the video to actually understand it. The cool part, though, is that it was shot with 25 GoPros for the bullet time effect that when he would like turn the corner of the RC car, uh, along with various high end cameras and slow motion cameras, probably a Phantom or so. Uh, they the shoot took a full three days to complete. And I mean, I can't imagine how long it took because they had to create these stick bombs every take. So they had to just go through millions and millions of these freaking little sticks they put together. Um and yeah, so it's just really cool to check out. Very interesting video, and the fact that it was done with an RC car. Not too many, not too much editing going into it either. It looks like it's just kind of straight up, yeah, shot. Yeah, nothing crazy special about it, but definitely something to check out. Uh, Target had a Photoshop fail this week after their website featured a terribly photoshopped model for their Exhilaration Juniors Midkini two-piece swimsuit. First off. <laughs> When you say juniors in mid-kini, Stephen, <laughs> that's not a good combination. No. They're underage, wearing bikini. It's terrible. But I do like tankinis. <laughs> I, I like tankinis. Not on, not on underage girls, but on regular On age. yourself? When I wear a tankini. I <laughs> show my muscles off. I got boobs that are bigger than some girls with the way that I work out. I work out. The model was literally missing the chunks out of her bottom, <laughs> and her body type was not symmetrical at all. I mean, this was terrible. Uh, to my eyes, it looks like somebody extremely untrained in Photoshop did this, and probably <laughs> not even in Photoshop, more like like friggin' MS Paint or something, you know? It's just bad. really bad. And the ad has been taken down since, though. Uh, there's a screenshot, though, over on the website, which you can see how poorly this was put together and edited. Uh, and now on to the topic of Photoshop. While we're on that, College Humor released an anti-Photoshop parody video where they basically touch up a model and turn her into a pizza. <laughs> Do they really? They it's turn so her into good. a piece of pizza. <laughs> oh, wait, speaking of pizza, <laughs> pizza Sutter, break. you want to make some pizza for us? Only if it's vegan organic. <laughs> no way in hell. That stuff is the worst stuff in the world. I had fake pizza once when I was with Modest Yahoo. We went to this cheesesteak place that used like seitan. You know, not Satan, but Satan. It's like some product of soy. Uh, of Satan? Whatever. So they eat it, but it's fake pizza. So they make the dough out of whatever, and then they make the cheese out of something else, and it's horrible. <laughs> For the record, I eat regular pizza. I don't eat vegan <laughs> organic pizza. That's awesome. Uh, so this is possibly the most dramatic Photoshop transformation ever. Again, they <laughs> now they, they go backwards showing like what, you know, she originally looked like as a pizza and then they go they basically just take all the effects off and, and transform her into that <laughs> I thought it was hilarious you gotta see it I'll have to watch you it you didn't see it yet I didn't it's see it it's so dude. good because you don't know where it's going I at know. first it just, it just looks like she's turning into a really big girl and then it's like all of a sudden just pepperoni <laughs> show up out of nowhere <laughs> um, and that is it for photo news I believe right I got one more oh yeah this you didn't know about because I had an NDA. Yes, this is something that I. Wasn't Nikon told. has released the V3. Normally, I'm probably not. I'm probably not even going to make a video about this, Stephen, because it's freaking V3. I was going to say, what is it? V3. They had the V1, the V2, the J1, the J2. This is their CX sensor camera. Ooh. That means it's really small. They didn't jump on the mirrorless bandwagon and do a mirrorless camera that had a APS-C size sensor. It's really small. Not very happy. It's an 18.4 megapixel CX sensor with no OLPF. I just want to go over certain specs that are interesting. It does 20 frames a second JPEG. 20 frames a second JPEG. It's freaking insane, first off. That's almost taking film, 24 frames a second. Yeah. Not film. Video. It has, a hun- video. It has 105 AF points. 105. 105 AF points, 171 of them are contrast points. The one thing that I will hand to the original uh, V1 and J1 is how amazing the autofocus really is. What I think that the interesting part about these cameras is they test out technology on a smaller scale here that ends up in the pro bodies at some point. That is true, For instance, it's doing now 160 ISO to 12,800. Most people using this camera... Uh, it doesn't have a viewfinder. You have to get an additional viewfinder. I'll just tell the price. Eleven ninety nine. Waste of money, in my opinion. Wow, Eleven ninety nine. Very expensive. 
I think this is a dead market. I don't know why they're going down this rabbit hole anymore, but let's talk about it has built in Wi Fi. It has a touch tilt screen LCD. That's not um, bad for video. It doesn't twist, it just tilts. It's a three inch touch screen. That's fine. A mode 1080 at 60 frames a second, but now it adds 120 frames a second at 720. Wow. That's the future of where cameras are going. They're going to start capturing at higher resolutions more frames a second for doing video. Um, Xpeed 4A processor, blah, 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 blah. Micro freaking SD. Really? Shit. Jesus, I hit the thing again. Micro, micro SD? SD. Like, the micro SD will get lost. It's smaller than my thumbnail. Why Why not just put an SD card in there? I don't know. Well, it's like we almost lose the GoPro one every week when we every do week. talk. They're coming out with a 70 to 300 VR, which is the equivalent to a 188 to 810 millimeters. Wow. Oh, my God. But the one good thing about this camera, one interesting fact that I'd like to see happen for something else, is it does, while shooting full video, while shooting video, it will capture full stills while recording. Meaning it's recording video. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to get a still image, so, you know, if you're doing production shots and you want production stills, it will take production stills and at the same time while doing video and give you a full res image. And doesn't pause the video, and right? It doesn't stop the video like the other, like some things normally do, where it stops yeah. the video but then continues well, after cameras, it's yeah. done. This is something that you will see added to future cameras. I'm surprised it hasn't come yet or implemented into cameras so far. Right. Uh, now, with does it do raw support or just JPEG? It's still, I think it does raw. Okay. I, I think I, I probably the, asked. I wonder if the stills are, are I JPEG I don't know that too. it does. Yeah, I think the stills are probably JPEGs. Yeah, I'm assuming they Most are. Most people that have that camera aren't going to shoot raw files. Yeah. Well, if, if they pay 1199 bucks, I don't know. The camera. Uh, Hopefully they will. <laughs> don't waste your money on that camera, people. <laughs> Nikon, thank you for uh, sending me that information. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, you had a friend that passed away. Yes, yeah. I had a friend uh, named Gina who passed away from battling cancer, colon cancer. For 26 the past, years old. 26 years old. She passed away about a week ago at the time of this recording. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's a shame. I mean, she's, she battled it for barely two months and uh, ended up passing. Not good. Yeah. Not her, good at all. Her, um, her friend... I mean, her fiance is actually one of my good friends that I grew up with. And his father actually taught me a lot about photography or what I know about photography. And uh, I think um, like one of the original rebels, I used to borrow from him all the time, a couple, probably about almost, I don't know what, seven, eight years ago. But anyway, I'm doing a run for her. It's a benefit cancer run. It's going to be uh, in two weeks, I think. But basically we're doing Team Gina and a bunch of us are running for her. And I'm going to try and get into full Rocky mode for the next two weeks and, and get my run on. But we're doing uh, basically a um, raising funds for it for the team. And, and we'll see if we can get a bunch of funds raised for that. And right. So if anybody's interested, you want to support that, you can go over to the website. The link is over there. If you want to support anything, support Stephen running for yeah. the cancer. Obviously, that's something that's close to me and it's close to him now. So, uh, yeah, anything you can do if you want. Yeah, for sure. Anything, anything at all, if you can help out. OK, back to the show. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, somber notes suck, but yeah, yeah, it's I just, life. it's, it's something, you know, I have this outlet and I, and I just think it's, it's, uh, I think I should talk about that. Absolutely. Man. There's no reason not to, mm -hmm. especially you learn from, you know, the fiance's dad and, and all that. So yeah, related to photography. And yep. Then. The information is over on the website. Now I have to unfortunately segue to something else. Mm -hmm. Uh, not going to do gear of the week yet. Uh, and before we get to flying soul, I had, a, I got a letter from Jackie. Jackie is somebody that uh, has followed the site for a long, long time. I believe she lives in Tennessee or she lives in Kentucky. Oh, she lives down south. She's a southern girl. She's got southern twang. Southern twang. So she sent me an update email. I've been following up with her for a long time. She took one of the boot camps and she always asks questions and I try to answer them the best that I can. And she's busting her ass out there. She was the one that went over to the, the, the dirt bracing track and was shooting photos out there, bought her 70 to 200, paid it off because of the photo she was doing there. So here's just a quick email from her. Uh, hey, Jared, I wanted to share another success story with you. As you know, I recently gave my website a complete makeover and switch to Squarespace. Not the reason why I'm reading this, but check out Squarespace anyway. Uh, like you suggested, I'm so glad you made the suggestion. Uh, it looks so much better now, and it's something I can be proud of. I also raised my prices to target different clientele. We talked about raising prices, right? So she's raised her prices. It, it seems uh, I was previously getting too many of the well- well, Walmart, well, well, Walmart does it cheaper, clients. 
Before, it seemed like I was <laughs> offering them. too much for too little, and some clients still complained about pricing. To weed out those clients and send them on to Walmart, I raised the prices on everything, which is a scary thing to do. It is, yeah. But you find out at some point you have to go for what you have to go for. You either wallow in the Walmart pricing and get the people that want Walmart, or you raise your prices and get the people that understand the value of what you're doing. Um, so where was I? So raise the prices on everything. So after lots of research and figuring, I solved that issue. It took me a, a while to get figures that I was comfortable with, but I did uh, but I did it. I also started offering newborn sessions. I've done a few already and told those parents to share, share, share my name and information. I threw in some free prints if they referred a new client. Nice work there. That booked and paid. Well, either all of the above worked or something worked. I've had, I've had more bookings in the past couple of weeks than I've had in a while. It's exciting for me to see things improve, even with my higher pricing. Raising my prices was the scariest thing I've done in a while. After the first sale, uh, sale with the new pricing, I was so relieved. Throw in all the school sessions that I've already told you about, and you have one happy and successful photographer. She does a lot of shooting at schools, uh, shooting uh, academies and things like that. I want to thank you for all the years of uh, guidance and fussing at me about my cheap prices. It's working, so keep up, keep on fussing. I'll always give you credit. Uh, Jackie Blakeney, pronounced Blakeney, since you always mispronounce it. I thought I'd help you out. But that's uh, something I wanted to pass along. Did she put that? Yeah, she did put that. That's funny. But no, it, it's true. Yeah. But you raise your prices, you get... You, you ask for it. You have to ask for the sale. You can't be afraid to do it. And I, like I said earlier, I'm in that place where I'm deciding what to do with the next video guide. You could release a $20 product. People always, some people bitched about that back in the day when I released the first one, $20 product. Oh my God, 20, you know, it should be 20 bucks. Well, yeah, and I think it's valued more than that. So you have to, you have to figure it out for yourself. Gear of the week, Steven? Yeah. What is gear of the week? I don't even know. You don't know what gear of the week is? No. Oh, you did show me kind of, right? Well, before Gear of the Week, I want to show you something else that came in the mail today. Postman Fro was busy. So there's a couple of Postman Fro videos that are going to go up in rapid succession because I want these up there because we already made them. First things first, I got a gray box in the mail. Ooh, I like gray boxes. It's got a nice piece of vellum printed. Uh, that's really nice paper. It says quality paper right there. Well, I'm not even going to tell you what it says yet, but it is quality paper. Oh, that is interesting. It's like transparent. Here it is. If you guys aren't watching at home or you're listening to the, ooh, this is the first, second time I've taken it out of the box. This says YouTube, congratulations, con congratulations <laughs> for surpassing 100,000 subscribers. My channel name on here is Jared Poland because that's the channel name that I use. I'm going to turn it around in a second, oh, okay. Stephen. I was admiring. It is a silver play button. That's awesome. There you go. I'm now at almost 300,000, so I missed the email about this many, many months ago. Basically, you want to know what they do when you hit 100,000? They give you $500 in credit to spend at B&H. Wow. And then they send you this thing. That's so. That's great. Pretty amazing, right? Yeah. So they're giving back. Plus, I've made money off of YouTube, but I am going to hang this. I'm really excited. My next goal is to get the million plaque. Yeah, well, what do they do for that? Well, you get a bigger, bigger plaque. It's like is 20... It gold? Yeah, it's a gold it's Ooh. a gold play button. Nice. And it's like sixteen by twenty four or sixteen by twenty framed. This is smaller because there's more people at there's how many people are at a hundred thousand? There's probably a, maybe three, four thousand people wow. that have done that. It's really not so many no, it's people. not that many when you no. consider it. So this is like a platinum record, maybe. Maybe <laughs> I'll consider it that in the new age of in platinum the new records. Age, yeah, that's this is true. what it feels like. This is nice. That's a hundred thousand. So that came from YouTube. I will get that hanging on the wall. That's Thank really you. cool that they do that. Well, is it's there, great that Google does that. Yes, Stephen Sutter? Sorry. Is there anything uh, between 100,000 and a million? Yeah. No. Wow. You get to a million. Like, once you get to a million, I've seen, I've, I've Googled it to see what people did when they unboxed them. It's an amazing thing. And then is it like 10 million or does it just stop from there, you think? Because gold, once, what are you going to get after gold? Well, platinum, bitch. Platinum, yeah. <laughs> but once they, uh, once, I don't know what they get after they get to 10 million, but. Is that what the next number is, you think? Or No. I mean, there's no, there's like two people at 10 million. Yeah. Hmm. I think once you get to that point, they probably sign you up and, and, and hook you up with some stuff. Well, I'm sure come, you know, 10 years from now, they'll probably have. A decent, not a decent amount, but a, a couple people up there. Things are evolving. Maybe we'll you'll see what be happens. Up there. Maybe million. I will be. Yeah. But Digital Rev has more. They all, they're almost at a million. They're, yeah. Uh, so I always have wanted in ears monitors. 
you know, the things that artists and musicians use when they're on stage and they look cool because they've got this thing going over their ear. I've always wanted them. So I reached out to um, Ultimate Ears. Mm -hmm. A while back, they sent me a review unit like three years ago of these in-ear monitors that were just gen g generic ones that anybody could wear. And they were good. I've been flying with them for the last three or four years. I've been very happy with them, but I've always wanted to get my, mo my ears molded. So I reached out to them. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But they sent me to go have my ears molded, which I did. And I had a pair of custom earplugs made. Because I've been using the 1299 earplugs for a long time, yeah. which are better than the foam ones. These things, I paid, paid for these. 170 bucks. Wow. Plus 25 bucks for the mold to be made. Now, let me tell you about the process of the molding. I went to the audiologist. They put, this, they, they put a piece of cotton all the way in, like all the way in. And they go past this nerve so it... It, Does it feel freaks weird? You, oh, oh. It, free, it, it freaks you out because it hurts for a second because there's that nerve there. And she yeah. warned me about that. But what they have to do is they have to put enough gook in there so that it, it goes past the second curve of your ear so that they can make these things right. So I got 25 decibel less. I wanted them to block out 25 decibels of sound. And these were 170 bucks. But I should really only need one pair of these for quite a long time. Yeah. Because... I hopefully won't lose them. They go around your neck simply like this. Red means right. Red means right. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you basically just wrap it around your ear, and it's going to take some time to figure out which way that they go, but they go in there. I had these in. Ooh, hey. I had them in the other day, and they really they cut down on the volume. They don't block everything because that's not the point. The point isn't to block all the noise. It's to just make your listening experience better. So I did that. Ultimate Ears, 170 bucks for these. I paid for these. Now, there's something else over here that they sent uh, that is a lot more expensive. A lot more. <laughs> a lot more expensive. And those are the monitors. I figured, uh, I reached out to them because I did my research. Is this for your piano playing when you're on stage? Yeah. <laughs> this is for my piano playing. I reached out to them because I did my research and they're one of the best companies out there for making in-ear monitors custom in your monitors. Look at this nice packaging. So yeah, it comes with a nice metal case that says Fronos photo on it because I had that. They, they engrave it like that. And then you open it up Ooh. and here they are. It, these are the professional real deal monitors that so happen to have the Fronos photo logo on it. That's so awesome. It cost me a hundred bucks to put the logo on it. Really? Yes. I wow. wanted the logo. So these are $1,350 in-ears. There are six speakers or six drivers in each of these ears. That's a lot. That's a, that's a whole lot. And by the lot. way, $1,350. Let me tell you, I didn't pay $1,350 for these. These are actually review units. The funny thing about a review unit of a custom molded earpiece is that they don't want them back. So you can read into that any way why. that you want, because this is made, made for my ear. What would they do with them? Um, I was actually looking and willing to spend up to $800 for a pair. I reached out to them. And I said, I'm looking to buy a pair. What do you recommend? And then they basically said, we're going to hook you up with them. And I said, all right, well, I'm buying these. I wanted to make sure I spent some money because... This is something that's more affordable, the, the, the earplugs. Yeah. You can get, I mean, no, I shouldn't be. And you'll use them, I think, probably way more. Well, I'm going to use the earplugs a lot for shows, at yeah. shows. And it's great to have my own custom ones. I just have to get used to putting them in. These are awesome. I've been using, I listened to these for a couple of hours yesterday, and it literally puts the music right in your head. Hmm. It's right in your head, and they block out all of the noise outside. Gone. Gone. So all you hear, gone, gone, gone. All you hear is the music. And I don't listen to it terribly too loud. And the other problem is I probably am not listening to them through the best audio source ever. So I can't really tell you, are they the greatest sounding things in the world? I can tell you that having something in my ears takes a bit getting used to, but it's very, it, it, it didn't bother me too much. I had them in for over an hour when I was working last night and really loved listening to the music with them. The bass sounds great. The treble sounds great. The only thing is I'll need to listen to an actual digital source, a higher quality source than, than, uh, than Spotify. You should, uh, Neil Young just re is doing a Kickstarter campaign. I you saw. see that? Yeah, I saw. Get one of those units because they're supposed to be high quality. Well, it's supposed to be uncompressed yeah. and the best sounding of the best sounding of the yeah, best he's sounding. Yeah, he's a big... Audiophile. Oh, yeah. So anyway, you want to check him out, just Google Ultimate Ears. They have in-ears that start at, I believe, $399. Uh, you have to get your ears molded. They also have other ones that are just generic. You put in your ear and they work. Uh, I think they've done a quality product and I'm happy to finally have a pair of in-ears. I use uh, 
earpiece, I think it is, for like 15 bucks that they're decent. They do the job, but they're nothing like them or, or the You want to test them you out? Have. You can't because they're molded for my ears, <laughs> Let Steven. me ask you. Let me ask you. So why did you get the logo on it when no one can even see it because you're a giant fro? <laughs> well, the reason, because they're mine and I wanted to have some kind of coolness factor to it. Is it when you shave your head? You can Well, no, you can still see them. I show people. It's for like, hey, look, these are mine. <laughs> look at my cool... Look at my in-ears. Expensive in-ears. Well, hey. <laughs> I did. I sent them to all my buddies on tour. I sent it to the merch dude. I sent it to Modest Yahoo. I was like, look what I got. Modest, doesn't he use them? He too? has in-ears too. The different the, in-ears. Okay, different kind. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't even know that he uses them because I don't even know what he uses, if he does use them. I don't think he does use in-ears. I know that when I was on tour with Perry Farrell, he had in-ears. So, hmm. so that's music news. <laughs> music news. Yep. That's... Uh, what is that? Gear of the week. Gear of the week. What yeah. else? Did it, what else did I have? Oh, we got flying solo, and we got um, F- uh, wheel of fro. Wheel, wheel of fro. fro. <laughs> Thanks, Sutter. So let's go through the flying solo. I only hand hand picked a few of them. Yeah, we talked about news and everything else for a while. That's because you today. had eighty seven stories. I know. Steven. I did have a lot. There were like big long, and you talked forever. Too. I did. I had a intro. Don't blame it on me. I'm not blaming it on you. <laughs> I love talking, and I think people enjoy the the discussions when they're sitting in their car or watching it on TV. I love seeing that people watch this on TV. That is cool. All right, we ready here? Mm-hmm. Kevin D. Dalton, how do I find the shutter count on my Nikon D90? I think I met Kevin D. Dalton at the Tennessee Photo Walk. Uh, I believe he was a cool guy with the southern twang. Southern twang. Big dude. Oh, yeah? Big dude. Like, really tall. Uh, how do I find the shutter count? Well, there is a website, and this is exactly what I did when I sold my D4. It's my, I Googled how to, how to get my shutter count, and That's I believe I it's myshuttercount.com. You upload one of the JPEG files, and it spits it back out you and to, at you and tells you how many things were on it. Very slow working website, so if you think it's running slow, it's probably not you. It's probably the website. Now, does that work for Canon and Nikon? Yeah. Okay, because I forget how I did it. I think I actually downloaded a program that I used connected to, use to a, my camera. I used to use well, I used to use a program called O Panda EXF. I forget what it was day. called. Yeah, but this is how I do it now. I just upload it to that website. Mm. Smart idea. Great yeah, that, idea. That's easy. Yeah. Chris Proctor, when you are at a store and see someone looking at DSLRs and gawking at the amount of megapixels and how it must be good because it was so everything good over there, Sutter. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just asking him because it's the D4s. How does the battery look? Still good? It's not red yet, is it? <laughs> well, then if it's not showing up, then it's not red. Check the top LCD Is screen. it still recording? Yes. Yeah, because... Yeah, oh, that's another thing that changed, yeah, on the D4S, is that instead of the blinking red record button, now it's solid red. Like the Canon. Like Canon, yeah. which makes sense. That's cool, Sutter. All right, so, okay, I'll read it again. Chris Proctor, when you're at a store and see someone looking at a DSLR and gawking at the amount of megapixels and how it must be good because it has so many, how do you approach them and save them from their terrible thinking. Also, how do you tell the guy who is helping them from the store that he doesn't know what he's talking about <laughs> and should just quit life? <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing is I had this happen once. And more than any time I'm at a store like Best Buy, which I rarely go to because I don't really buy stuff at stores anymore. I just order it on Amazon or, or what. We still have the behind the scenes thing. Oh, with the, the hidden camera? The hidden camera. Which I have to check the legality of. Exactly. But uh, Another reason to get that lawyer. Yeah, another reason <laughs> to get the lawyer. So if I go and I go into Best Buy and I'm wearing a <laughs> hidden camera. And I tell no one to buy the products, what happens? Right. What ha- <laughs> no, because I would have them try. Anyway, I was at Best Buy and I was just do, 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 minding my own business, listening to the sale person, trying to sell somebody either the Nikon or the Canon. And he starts off with Canon's more for video. And Nikon is more for stills, which at the time, yeah, it was known. It was more like that. So he's going, he's talking, and he's then he then he goes like this. Then he goes, "I like to go to this website called KenRockwell.com, and I get all my information from there. He really knows what he's talking about. So why don't you check out that site for all the information?" And that's when I had to chime in, and I was like, "Don't go to KenRockwell.com." The guy's like, why not? I'm like, because Ken Rockwell's clueless. And these two people with a little girl were sitting there looking at me going, what? What are you saying? You know, what, what, why are you? And this kid's like, who are you? I didn't want to be like, do you know who I am? He didn't know who I was. I had the website. He didn't know who I was. I was like, don't go to KenRockwell.com. And I gave them my card. I'm like, I will give you my beginner guide for free. Just because this douchebag here told you to go to KenRockwell.com. And the kid's like, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, okay. That's cool. I'm like, you can listen. Don't let, check out. I'm like, here's a card. Go to my website. I would not tell the person to quit at life. It just tells I, you, you know. <laughs> that's pretty harsh. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I just, I have very hard time not giving my opinion. 
That is very but true. But if somebody's saying go to KenRockwell.com and that's where you're going to find the knowledge, screw you. That is the worst knowledge you're going to ever find. <laughs> you're going to find iSuit JPEG, the greatest camera ever made. It's my iPhone 5S. And, I, and that's, I, that's, I don't know if that's how he talks because he still won't come on Raw Talk. I need to give him another email. Yeah, well, he probably doesn't come on Raw Talk because the way he talks <laughs> well, about Well, he thinks him. I'm going to rip him apart, which I'm not. I want to have a discussion. Screw your 75 minutes, Sutter. God damn it, Jared. <laughs> For those that don't know, Sutter holds up signs every 15 <laughs> Which is good. to 20 minutes. It's yeah. good to have these signs. Mm, so signs, we can see how. Signs everywhere. The signs. Something, 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 something. What Read song those. is that? You're really good at this, Jared. <laughs> signs. I figured it was called Signs. Called but who signs. sings that? It's from the 70s. Oh, not or that. 80s. It's weird. I don't know it. I don't know it. Uh, I do know Wait, it. Wait, neither do I. That's so weird. Oh, good for you, Sutter. <laughs> Uh, so I would not tell them to quit at life. I just would quit either walk away and not say anything or walk up to those people and be like, can I help you? Like, I, I couldn't get a job at Best Buy, by the way. Uh, me too. When I was looking for me a job too. back in the day and ended up at Ritz selling cameras, I walked in there. I'm like, I'd like to sell cameras because I know what I'm talking about. They're like, well, you have to go to the website and you have to fill this out. So I go to their website. I fill out their information and I get told that we're not going to be hiring you. And I'm like, how the fuck... Can you do an interview with somebody or how the earmuffs fuck can you how the hell can you decide who you're going to hire without meeting them yep. based off of a piece of freaking a survey email survey that, that you send in that doesn't tell you I haven't established my credibility you don't know that I can't come in here and up your sales and I'm not a future manager of your freaking store. Man, that did that piss me off. Dude, me too. I applied for it when I was, I think, 16 or 17. And yeah, I did the same thing. I wanted to work in their music section and their photography section, which at the time they still sold a you know boatload of CDs. And yeah, they I got the same exact result. And I'm what like, are, are they, you kidding me? What do they put in the music section now if it's not do they still have CDs? I don't know. I just went there the other day uh, and they don't really have a they have a small, small C D section. And but it used to be like I can't imagine the store. DVDs and Blu-rays either. Just some smaller it's yeah. probably all video games it, and the computer section is you know expanding more well, they and got more. apple and then they've got a samsung store the video i mean the uh, phone section too is blowing oh, up oh the phone section is yeah. one of the biggest things mm -hmm. too yeah because i mean that's an evolving thing and the yeah. photo section is still shitty by the way i went to hh H. greg hh H. greg is formerly it's not circuit city but, but it's basically circuit city yeah but i went there and they have like nothing when really? it comes to tech stuff like i thought they would be like another best buy I or bought circuit my TV city there. they have tvs it's and like that kind of best stuff buy. but it's more generic broad stuff it's yeah. not like i need a power cable or something you know what i mean right or something like that but yeah i thought they would have a lot of stuff they have a bunch of they even have like like chairs and stuff that they sell. They do. Which I didn't know. They'll sell whatever they can make money on. Yeah, pretty much. And they do okay. I mean, I had 24 months zero financing to pay off my TV. Oh, that's awesome. By the way, I just paid it off a year early because I got tired of the bill. That's a 60 inch, right? That's the 60 inch Samsung. Nice. Uh, 120 hertz. I bought it a year ago when I moved in. I what I, it was like 1500 bucks at the time and then they give you two years to pay the damn thing off it was 24 months to pay it off i paid it off in what 12 i got tired of the bill i started sending them 200 and 200 bucks a month just to get it out of the way because mm -hmm. the way that these companies work is that if you miss a payment or you get to that 24 months and it's not paid off all of the two years of interest that accrued gets tacked on at the end. Really? That's how they make money. Well, that's why people get into such credit card debt and lose so much money. Hmm. Like, I would pay for the thing up front if they gave me 10% off. Yeah. Give me some money off, and I'll just pay you straight up now, and you get all the money. But they get all the money from the bank anyway up front, and then the bank exactly. is the one that collects all the money on the back end because it's GE Capital. Anyway, uh, we're... I, this is what a podcast is, by the way. <laughs> Seriously. I listen to podcasts, and it's just talking about shit. That's what you do. We There's try. Some, you, you follow a form and you talk about ideas as they happen. Right, Sutter? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, so I would never tell the person to quit at life. <laughs> How many times have you said I know. that? <laughs> That's pretty funny, though. Andy. Oh, Andy. Oh, come on. Come on. Like. <laughs> like. L e i t c h. I think he said it's French. I don't. I don't. Anyway. Sorry, Andy. I want to know. I don't know. Licked. Licked. Like. Maybe know. it's German. Schnell! <laughs> well, that's all I got from watching, like, German movies back in the day. <laughs> Schindler's List. Classic.
that's a tough movie to watch. That's a very tough that movie to watch. That is one of the hardest movies. To, I haven't watched 12 Years a Slave yet, but I hear that's a tough one Me as too. well. Me too. I really want to watch that. I heard great things. Yeah. Well, uh, obviously, yeah. My dad said it was a tough movie to watch. I'm sure, yeah. So I got to watch that. Okay. Uh, I want to know what precautions you guys take against your stuff getting stolen. Uh, we we all know it. It we all know it demands 100 percent concentration to take photos, especially if a gig, if it's a gig or even or an event where you have to be totally focused on the action. But when you when you just whisk a one to two thousand dollar lens off your camera and grab another from your bag, how do you minimize the chances of some op- opportunist swiping? Uh, or nabbing it in your concert shoots you seem to be pretty uh blase about this jared open bag moving away from your gear etc but i'm sure you 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 think about it well i do think about it we do all think about it you hope that knock on wood somewhere forehead it hasn't (laughs) happened that somebody has popped a lens out of my bag and taken it that i know of um me too yeah lens tag i use lens tag now knock on did you knock on wood cedar sutter Thank you. You got to knock on wood. Or if you don't have wood, for anybody that doesn't know this, it's a Jewish thing. You knock on your forehead. That counts as wood. Does it? Or you could just I knock on your penis. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, but you got to have wood. Whatever. <laughs> Either one works. Yeah, for good luck. I should tell that to a girl. Oh. It'd be like, there's no wood around. There is now. Stop. <laughs> that was funny. It was funny. You know, for the kids. For the kids. I don't know about the kids. Do you know what movie that's from? <laughs> um, I don't know. I know you've said it before. For the kids. For you know, for kids. Can we get more of a hint? Uh, like a hula hoop. Hula hoop. Oof. T- uh, Tim Robbins. <sighs> All I know is what? Shawshank Redemption? Fight, fight, fight! I don't know. <laughs> no, it's the Hudsucker Proxy. I've never heard of that fantastic movie. Yeah. Anybody out there just like Flight of the Navigator last week? Hudsucker Proxy is a fan freaking tastic movie. Love that movie. You know, for the kids. Anyway. <laughs> Set, are you ready to be you called out on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> on both of us? You know, that reminds me of though, now that he reminded of something. Um, have you ever watched WKUK? Or like, like the whitest kids you know? Have you ever watched Oh yeah, I've watched stuff? that. Have you ever watched The Grapist? I don't think I have. Because he skits. said something very similar to that. That like... Um, the wood part? That part? <laughs> no, no, for the kids. Like, Oh, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> you gotta watch it. It's funny. Uh, they, they are funny. Make things. sure, yes, in the pit, you're with prof- hopefully with professionals that are not going to take your gear. Hopefully not going to walk away. There's security there. I use lens tag to, to tag all of my lenses and gear, which I've been doing as I upload and get, get something. I, I put it up there. It. Yeah, you do it. If somebody steals your stuff, lens tag isn't going to stop them from stealing it, but it's going to stop them from selling it real damn quick. Mm-hmm. Because if if somebody takes one of my lenses and I realize it, I go on the lens tag, I click there that it's stolen. It propagates on the you uh, onto onto all the search engines like Google, so that if somebody searches that code, the the serial number, it's going to come up as stolen. So they're not going to be able to sell it. And then I, if I ever see them again, I'll punch them in the face. <laughs> Punch him right in the wood. Boom! Not in the wood, right in the <laughs> face. Uh, yeah, I um, I mean, luckily we both know most of these security guards where we go and shoot around here locally. Yeah. So I I trust them and and they you usually watch out for my gear and stuff while I'm shooting. I mean, we're only in there for three songs. Yeah. It's not it's like quick. I'm. It's not and like we I'm know walking the to the back. Too. Well, it's not most like I'm just them. walking away. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I wouldn't put it past somebody to go into your bag and take something. Oh yeah. Just. Knock on wood, it hasn't happened. Yeah. Guy Colin Gagilio. Is there anything wrong with sending out photos to post-processing shops? It seems like a great value that can save me a lot of time and reinvest that time in sales and marketing. Thanks. All right. So when I was on Creative Live and I got finished doing my Creative Live talk, they had a nice sales pitch from some douchebag company that was uh i guess paying for a sponsorship that you send them your files which again if you're going to be sending raw files to somebody over the internet that's going to take up a lot of time and bandwidth i don't outsource the processing and editing of my files that is part of what makes my images my images is how i process them and sure back in the day there were these photographers that had master printers for them that did this stuff but they understood the style of what the photographer was going for and that's what they replicated in the dark room um i think as a busier photographer if you are doing multiple weddings a weekend if you're doing multiple weddings a month if that is your thing i think 
Have you walked behind me lately to reset this camera? Yeah, the last yeah, he time did. I, uh, I don't he's even remember very the sneaky. camera set. He's very sneaky. Um, I don't want to outsource my own stuff. That is my style. If you're doing all those weddings, if you have somebody in-house that can tweak the file, like you go make the run of the ones that you want edited. If you have them do the first pass and then you go in and do some tweaking, I may not have a problem with that because weddings become more of a... Uh, a turn and a burn type thing. You want to get them done. You want to get them out. But when it comes to my personal work, I am the one that's going to process it because that's my vision for my personal images. I remember I was watching uh, Jasmine Starr's wedding photography thing on Creative Live where she did like a five-day live First wedding. First off, Creative Live is fantastic. Yeah. So for me saying what I said, that's just about that advertising guy that came up. I was really Understandable, pissed. Yeah. I was really pissed off that I just got done finishing. I didn't even plug any of my own stuff. And they're sitting there at the end of my discussion selling something that wasn't mine. Because it makes it look like you support it. Well, I, it wasn't that. It was just I was standing there. Nobody told me that that was going to happen. Hmm. So I'm just standing there with a thumb up my butt going what I didn't I'm like I didn't get to plug my thing yet I walked over to the producer I'm like am I gonna get to plug my thing and she's like yeah and then they threw it back to me for like 12 seconds and then I was like I can't believe you guys are doing this but that's what they need to do but anyway mm. Creative Live you were watching Jasmine Star. yeah so I was watching her and she was doing that wedding five day thing or whatever and I watched the last day of it which was live and basically she was showing that she sent she uh, also sends out her images to get touched up and all that and I tried using the same company she does because they, they, I think they let you send like 10 sample images I forget the, the company name? I do it's, the, it's gotta be the same company it's that probably was the same one um, but I tried sending out 10 images and they came back just kind of like generic bulk edits <laughs> like there wasn't anything special about them so I think it's it's what it's your style you know you need right, to make it your own that could have been the style of somebody printing uh, developing that they yeah, thought was good exactly see that that's the problem with that now i'm not also ripping on the guy who did the business because in photography in any business if you can in anything any field if you can come up with a business that other people want and they're going to pay you to do this fascinate good go for it because i can't sit here and rip because i'm a photographer who also makes money doing a website and i also purposely other sent sources of income are extremely important in this day and age multiple sources of income there are very few photographers remember what you were going to say yeah but there were very few there are very few photographers that make it just by being photographers there's a lot of professionals who either came from money invested in real estate and have a lot of money to just be able to support the job that they do or they have wives that work full-time jobs that they can basically make less money but still be a photographer mm -hmm. there's so many different angles to it you never try to guess or 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 read into somebody's pockets never do that stuff but in this day and age having multiple sources of income is really important that's why when people sit there and say i'm looking to go pro as a photographer don't quit your day job Keep your day job, maybe take less work from your day job, you know, maybe pare it down, but add that other money. More is better. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, I was going to add on to when I submitted those 10 images, I also sent in one underexposed and one overexposed image just to see if they would catch that and maybe tweak it. And they didn't. They just said, you know, basically applied that same bulk edit that they did with all the other images to those two images. That's so, really disappointing yeah, to hear. Yeah, but now I do think... If you want to do a bunch of compositing and some heavy Photoshop work, you know, maybe add some flames, stuff like that. Okay. That's a different story. Different you can story altogether. There's different companies that do that. There's there's post production people. Exactly. Uh, there's post processors that get paid to take one specific image. Yeah, retouchers, and, yeah. And retouchers that do like the final one that you want done. Mm -hmm. You direct them. Sutter, what's up? I think the only place where I don't see as an issue is for like studio work to send out to like retouchers exactly, for your yeah. clients because then your client will work with the retoucher to get what they want because those photos aren't necessarily like what you want to be. It's for your client. It's for the client. So the client picks, they work with the retoucher. Smart idea. Thank you. So mm -hmm. that is that is one of those things. When it comes to weddings, if you have somebody in-house making tweaks, that's cool. But I still edit... When I was doing weddings, I still would sit there and find the 400 or 500 and edit every single one of them myself. Yeah, I mean, me too, but to each their own. Yep. Uh, Chuck Trembley. How do find... <laughs> How do you find something interesting to shoot? How do you find something? I'll add to you. Yeah. How do you find something interesting to shoot when you live in an area that has nothing interesting to shoot? <laughs> you know what, Chuck? I got yelled at for yelling at people last two weeks ago. 
uh, you, Chuck, you just got to find something. This is this is you as a photographer. I don't that creative. I, I'm eye. kind of. Yeah, I kind of heard this thing my whole life is like, this area is so boring. This area is so boring. Every freaking area you live in is exactly the same. There's a Target. There's a Walmart. There's a, a supermarket. There's a Best Buy. Everything runs about the same no matter where you are, right? You can be bored in Las Vegas and be bored in Philadelphia the same way. Uh, I, I just it, It's what you come up with in your area. There's a million cars. I mean, this is just off the top of my head. Find all the cars in your area. Do some kind of car project. Find some macro things. What is there? What is your area known for? I mean, these are the things. Think you gotta think about it. You have to step outside. You have to just walk around or come up with ideas on your own. That is what it is to be creative. So I, when you're in an area that nothing, inter- there's got to be something interesting to shoot. Yeah. You have to create it. You have to make it. That's what all I'm going to say. I mean, I think it comes down to different themes you could do and just different various angles. You can make something that's boring, interesting. It's a whole bunch of things. All right. Uh, Basti Grindmaster. Sorry. Basti Grindmaster. That's that's a name? Or B-A-S-T-I-G-R-I-N-D-M-A-S-T-R. It's a pretty awesome name. Basti Grindmaster. Grindmaster. We won't get into porn names again. <laughs> oh, God. If you go, what's your porn name, Sutter? Yeah, what is it? I How forget you... what this is. It's like your street name and like your first pet or something. Yeah, but I made up my own Leroy Ballstein. <laughs> and it's not Leroy. 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 L small A capital <laughs> R O Y Ballstein because of the Jewish thing. Wait, wait, but what you're saying though, isn't it your first your street your like home street? Your middle name. name and your first street name. Just go with your middle name and your first street. That's just try that. Mayan would be Joseph Johnson. Hey, <laughs> you lived on Johnson Lane? <laughs> yeah. Sutter? Uh, Anthony Oak. Oh, <laughs> you got to lay down one. the wood, buddy. And I, so my, easy to make up these <laughs> my middle name is Scott, which I never use. And I lived on Houston Court. So Scott Houston. Scott Houston. It's not that bad. No. It's not as good as <laughs> Anthony Oak. Anthony Oak. <laughs> Yes, Anthony. I want to watch Anthony. This week. In a world. <laughs> this week on Pornhub.com, Anthony Oak lays down the wood hard. What? <laughs> that was awesome. Okay, can you make sure to add my voice uh, thing oh, yeah, to that? I definitely will. We need to do. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> moving on. Sorry, uh, Basti Grindman. Oh, I didn't answer his question. I didn't read his question yet. <laughs> I didn't even read Basti's question. If you, if you uh, go on an event and you take maybe 300 photos, do you delete the files you don't like or that are not sharp, or do you take them all just because reasons? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> I personally look through the pics that, and start to delete the unsharp first and then those I don't like, which often ends with only one-third or less of the original number. Is this the correct way in your opinion? In my opinion, I don't delete anything. I keep just about everything unless it's totally blown out and it's totally gone and it's just so far gone that I may delete it or I, do, I, I leave everything because the first time you go around, you see the images one way. The second time you go around, you may find something, excuse me, that you didn't have there before that is much better. Yeah. You just, you missed it for whatever reason. So I do not delete anything other than those I don't even I don't delete in the camera either because what's interesting when you shoot the raw and the raw to the different cards it will delete off of one card and not the other huh. so because it one's a redundant backup yeah, yeah, so unless yeah. you cycle through and go to that card you can't do it now I actually do the opposite I do delete in camera uh, basically shots that are just unusable or blown out or not sharp or something along those lines Oh, we have a rapid fire question again. We haven't had these for a while. Yeah, because I got tired of them. Really? Well, there are not too many good ones were coming in. Are you ready? This, I think, is a good one. Does it say Avril Lavigne in this one? Uh, no. Somebody else had Avril Lavigne and uh, Shirley Manson. Oh, yeah? What's she look like? Uh, nothing like Avril Lavigne. I love Avril. Singer of Garbage. Wow. Did I, have, I said that I always told people the, the best pickup line ever for Avril, Avril Lavigne, I said this before on air, I think, is, and it would work today because obviously it did work for him. Avril, I'll be your Chad Kroger. <laughs> that's what I would say. That's it? That's, it it that's would simple. work because she married the guy. <laughs> and she's still not pregnant. 
<laughs> Unless she had a kid and we didn't know about no, it. No, she didn't. Because remember, we shot her at uh, you the You shot her. I oh, wasn't I there. Her. Yeah, right. Did she look good? She did look good. I Very good. Her. Did she have those pants on? She, leather pants, I think she had. That's what I wear. Oh, but they're not leather. So good. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> run 100 miles an hour or fly 10 miles an hour. It's pretty I easy. I want to run 100 miles an hour. Really? You wouldn't want to fly? Oh, but I can fly 10 miles an hour? Yeah, run 100 miles an hour or fly 10 miles an hour. I want to run there faster. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of tough, but I think it depends I would if it's flying. time. I mean, I want to fly. Flying's cool. Yeah. Do I have a drone? <laughs> <laughs> Tetris or Pac Man? That's easy. It's Tetris all day, all every day. day. <laughs> That's the Inspector Gadget. Theme. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> lifetime supply of sushi or protein? Sushi. <laughs> have your local WNBA team win a championship or have $5? <laughs> five dollars? Five dollars. Because I don't think we have a WNBA team and oh, who gives a shit about WNBA? Horrible. Maybe the WNBA would let me shoot, unlike the Sixers who have just told me that they don't have room on the baseline. By the way, the Sixers are the worst or second the worst team in the league. And they said that they don't have enough space on the baseline because it's really busy. That's the Sixers! They suck! I wasn't supposed to yell. Maybe I hope he doesn't watch the show. Because then I'll never get a pass. Uh, I responded back. They're like, unfortunately, we don't have space. And I responded back. I said, thank you for your email. Uh, I don't agree. I basically wrote back and was like, look, I've done this before. I turn on games every night and... There's space under, not every night because I don't watch the Sixers, but I just said this. I watch and you see that there's space on the baseline. You have space. Don't play this freaking game. I'm like, come up with something better. Like, we don't allow non sanctioned NBA shooters in, mm-hmm. or the NBA has a rule that they don't allow publications like this. That's something that I, can, I can't that get makes around. Sense. Yeah. But if you tell me that there's no room on the baseline, it's the freaking Sixers right now, <laughs> and they suck. They draw about 8,000 people to a game. The stadium holds 20. Oh, yeah. So any publicity that they get is good. So this is good publicity. This is horrible publicity. <laughs> I, st- I want to shoot a game. Go ahead. Last one, Green Day or Sidney Crosby? <laughs> <laughs> Green Day, man. I hate them both. I hate them both. That's funny. I would take Green Day over Sidney Crosby because Sidney Crosby is such a baby. <laughs> baby with his whiny face and incredible skills and Stanley Cup winning guy, but <laughs> but screw him. Enjoy these questions. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. Uh, Laith Shan, uh, Shanshal. Why do photographers use flash on the red carpet? They doesn't even, they don't even bounce it or diffuse it because nobody cares about those images. They live for 12 seconds. It's just to show how does their hair look? What jewelry are they wearing? What do their shoes look like? And what does their full body dress and smile look like? That is what they go through when they shoot on the red carpet. They need to get a tight head shot. They need to get a wide shot. They need to get a shoe shot, tight shoe shot, and they get the dress shot. Yeah. That's it's, all it's, they do. It's just meant because there's so many other photographers there. There's nothing. One, there's nothing to bounce it. What are you going to bounce it off the sky? Exactly. What are you looking at? The GoPro's not blinking anymore. Uh-oh. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I had the battery charged, but shouldn't have died no big deal it's just the gopro angle um as long as everything else is running everything else running yeah hopefully (laughs) yeah hopefully um (laughs) so on the red carpet i mean they they literally put the camera right the the flash right over the lens yeah because there's eight million people shooting so you can't really have it in other people's way they don't give a shit it's just it's just a snap it's a snapshot it's paparazzi some of them have the brackets and stuff but yeah they they really don't care and it's almost better to get that harsh flash right on the face because they want to show all the imperfections and crap that'll sell and that's why they wear so much makeup yeah exactly Harpet Sandhu. In the digital age we live in, with everyone having online portfolios such as Squarespace, what do you think is the best leave behind if you go in for a meeting? Well, that's something for you to discuss, uh, for you to figure out. I have a leave behind that is on order that I can't tell you what it is yet. Uh, you've seen it. You've seen it. You know what it is. The leave behind. What we uh, created. You can't yeah, talk yes, about yes, it yes, yet. Yes. My hair pick could be a leave behind. Something like uh, Ben Loiner, who did Breaking Bad, could leave behind rock candy, blue mm-hmm. rock candy from Breaking Bad, so they remember him. That is something that's interesting. Leaving behind photos, leaving behind shit that somebody can throw out is exactly what they're going to do. If it's unique and they throw it out, they remember it at least. So 
what I would leave behind, I would make sure I would do some research on who the person is, look into their background, see what they, they like and what they're interested in, and buy something. And, and, Senator, and, and you have it. those cool uh, wooden cards, right? The business cards yep. or whatever? Yeah, they're pretty interesting, too, just to remember them by, you know? I do. <laughs> Sean Taylor. I'm a tall guy, 6'4". I wow. shoot, shoot my fir- uh, shot my first show in the pit a while ago. I was concerned that being tall, I would get in people's, fans mostly, way. The stage was elevated, but what is your feeling on this? I know that neither of you are that tall. Screw you, with the exception of your fro. <laughs> I'm 6'2 <laughs> with the fro. Thanks for all the advice. It was your advice that got me in the pit. So it's a good question. Uh, it's interesting. We sometimes stand on step stools to get a little higher for the first two or three songs. Only if it's not in someone's way. If it's not in someone's way, if the pit's big enough. If it's in other cases, I try to stay out of the way as much as possible, get down on a lower angle, shoot up. Uh, in certain pits, if people are standing, they don't even notice you there because the stage is higher up and uh, Tweeter Center, sorry, uh, Susquehanna Bank Center, same thing. The The stage is really high there. Mm-hmm. So if we're there, it's really up to our chest. right? My chest, sorry. Depends if you're And then we have that really tall guy who shoots there. He shoots over people's shoulders, and and that's fine. I don't think it bothers people, but just being cognizant that you're not standing in the same place the whole show uh, for the three songs and blocking that person's view, or if you are allowed to shoot the whole show, make sure you get down on a lower angle. Those people waited in line or bought tickets to be in the front row to see the show. Yeah, there there is, like you said, there's this really tall photographer. He's probably taller than 6'4", that shoots with us on occasion. And now, he does get in the center sometimes, and we'll stay in that same spot, which is really annoying as long as you don't do either of those things i mean just shoot a little farther back if you have other smaller photographers in front of you well i you know i like to to sit in the middle too but i will move yeah so that is flying solo steven anything else to add no No, sutter anything else to add um you have six minutes for a wheel fro we gotta do wheel fro still steven come get the wheel of fro i forgot about the wheel of fro holy jesus buddy oh i thought you were just saving it for the end this this is the end. The end, my friend. The end. This is the end. Do you know who that is? Uh, I want to say Johnny Cash, but I'm not no. sure. No. Who are we talking about? No, it's that other band. Well, the way you, you sang it <laughs> sounded like Johnny Riders Cash. Riders on a storm. Riders on a storm. Until the day was... It's Jim Morrison. The Doors? I know who Jim Morrison Riders is. Riders on the storm. I got you now. Riders on the Wheel of Fro. I picked this person off the list for the DSLR video guide. If you want to sign up there to get the latest information when I start seeking that out or get a possible review copy and maybe a discount, the first people that can buy it when it comes out, go to fronosphoto.com slash DSLR hyphen. No. Go to fronosphoto.com slash DSLR hyphen video hyphen guide. (laughs) There you can sign up. And this week we've got Jason. Uh, I believe it's Jason Huff, if I'm going to base it off of his email. He is spinning the wheel of fro that we have the Rode microphone. Last week it was Adoramapix. We got the fro guide. Borrow Lenses gives money. Squarespace gives a year of the pro. Lexar gives something, maybe a hub. Adoramapix does those photo books. We've got a questiony question mark. And I think... Uh, think Tank Photo. I almost forgot them. So let me spin it, and then we're in it to win it. Sutter, we you ready? I didn't like that spin. <laughs> there we go. I hope it doesn't spin. Oh, did, I did it again. Spin off and hit you in the face one day, Eckert. <laughs> and where it's going to stop on Lexar? No! Question mark! Oh! Question mark! Oh! 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 Finally! <laughs> 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 All right, Stephen, you want to remove this from the wheel of fro table? First time ever. We hit a question mark. That's awesome. For somebody who hasn't been watching, I don't even remember what it's for. <laughs> How much time is there? Okay, so Jason from the email list. Woo! It was so exciting. Where's Bob Barker and his Barker Beauties? That's like, like winning Plinko, prize. man. Yeah. So Jason. You get to pick whatever it is you want off the wheel of fro. I will be contacting you. You can pick anything. Could be Squarespace. Could be Adorama Picks. Could be something from Lexar. Could be the two hundred and fifty dollars from Borrow Lenses. <laughs> it could be uh, what else is on the wheel? Frono's photo <laughs> video guides. I mean, whatever you want, man. It's the question mark. <laughs>
And that is going to bring us to the end of the show, Stephen. This has been a good show. So long that the GoPro stopped working. I yeah. don't know why. How the long Go- has it been, Sutter? What did you say? Uh, 1.45. Oh. I don't understand why the GoPro would end. Normally it's fine. Did you ever format the card? Yeah. Hmm. I did. We'll, we'll get up there in a minute. Don't How much time do I have? Three All right, minutes. good. So that was a fun show. That was. We should have a guest, uh, one of our interviews for next week. May I actually finally? We will definitely have. I a think guess. we're going to release the Modest Yahoo one finally. Yeah, we've been waiting to correspond it with the release of his album mm-hmm. uh, because I believe they're going to give a Fro, Fro readers a free single. Oh, and tell the dude who uh, was asking about the photo pit, he should definitely watch that. Oh, you the dude who wants to know about the photo pit, <laughs> watch that one next week. Uh, yeah, this was a very. I enjoyed this show. I like. I like the podcast. It was good. We've passed a million downloads by the time the show has ended. It's awesome. Because I'll go look. It'll say a million. Uh, and we have over 700,000 combined video plays. So there's a lot of views that get into the podcast. If you guys, you want to get out there and do something, start making some podcasts. Get out there and just make something. Just sit and talk to your friends for an hour a week and put it out into the world. It may not get traction. It may get a lot of traction, but it's fun. It's great to sit here and have this conversation. It's a great release from the work day for me or the work week, and it creates a lot of work for Steven to do later. Uh, so, <laughs> so much fun editing. That is, uh, that's Raw Talk episode number 77. Thank you guys for watching. Sutter. Sorry, Sutter, Eckert, thank you guys. <laughs> Jared Poland, Frono's Photo.com. See ya.